painting with markers. In today's skill builder, we will use washable markers like watercolor paint to create an image of the Aurora Borealis. The Aurora Borealis is a real phenomenon that happens in the nighttime sky of the North Pole. It is created when sunlight particles interact with the Earth's magnetic field, creating a dazzling display of vibrant colors in the night sky. Supplies and Substitutions This section explains materials needed for the skill builder. It begins with materials found in your art supply kit, but keep watching. If you cannot find or do not have these materials for any reason, there are also plenty of substitutions so that everyone can create art at home. You will be using materials that were provided in your supply kit sent home earlier in the year. After I go through this brief list of materials, I will provide a list of substitutions if you cannot find or did not receive some of these materials for any reason. Your art supply kit contained a watercolor paint set with a paintbrush inside, an extra paintbrush, several sheets of thicker watercolor painting paper, a sketchbook. In addition, you will need to provide a pencil, black crayon, a white crayon, and a bowl or cup of water. You can use empty containers from your recycling bin as your water bowl. I like to use empty yogurt cups that I have washed out. You may also want a little bit of a paper towel nearby to catch any water. If you did not receive or cannot find some of these materials, I'd like to walk you through some easy substitutions. If you cannot find your thicker watercolor paper or perhaps have already used it in other artworks, you may paint inside your sketchbook like I've done here. I recommend after the drawing stage that you put a paper towel behind your paper before you add any paint. This will help soak up extra water and protect the other pages in your sketchbook from getting wet so that they are still usable for art making in the future. Other options include cutting up a grocery bag and painting on the surface. You can also cut open an empty cereal box and paint on the back side. In this case, I used an empty cardboard box and painted my artwork on a side of that box. If you cannot locate your watercolor paints, you will be doing this activity using washable markers. It's important that the markers be washable because we will activate them with water from the water bowl. If you cannot locate your paintbrush, you may use the tip of your finger or some Q-tips to help spread the color around. Pause this video and take a moment to gather your materials. Press play when you are ready to begin. Step one, create your design. This video is for students that will be using washable markers like watercolor paint. We will begin by drawing our design with a pencil so that if we make a mistake or wish to make changes, we have the ability to erase. You will draw a horizon line on your paper. Remember that a horizon line separates the ground from the sky, or in this case, the ocean from the sky. Next, you will draw three hills or mountains in your artwork. You can choose to use a smooth curvy line or a bumpy or even jagged design, depending on whether you want gentle rolling hills or terrain that looks more mountainous. I'm going to draw a series of three bumpy hills on my paper. 
Next, I need to prepare for the crayon resist technique. Crayon resist works by outlining your artwork using crayons and then painting over it with the washable marker and water. The wax from the crayon will resist the ink and water, allowing the color of the crayon to show through. In order for this technique to work, you will need to press hard with your crayon. Not so hard that the crayon breaks, although sometimes that happens, um, but you need to make sure that you've got a thick outline on your paper, perhaps even retracing your outline to make doubly sure. Use a black crayon to outline your rolling hills or mountains along with the horizon line. Retrace if needed. When you're finished outlining this with black, you'll move on to the white, <clears throat> excuse me, to the white. You can add dots for starlight in your sky and wiggly lines to look like ocean waves in the water. Pause the video here to complete this part of your artwork by outlining with black and white crayon. Start the video again when you are done with this step. Step two, paint the sky. To fill our sky with color, we will be combining two techniques. They are called crayon resist and wet on wet. We have used black and white crayon to outline our mountains or hills and add starlight to the sky. These colors or these crayon colors will be revealed as we add a marker with water. And now we're going to do the wet on wet technique so that we can blur and blend colors together in our sky area. This technique wet on wet will work best if you take a clean paintbrush and wet or pre-wet sections of your paper at a time. You will then draw right on top of these wet areas. It's important that you work quickly. The wet on wet technique requires that the paper be wet. So I can use my marker and I recommend doing vertical strokes in your sky. The Aurora Borealis often has what looks like ribbons of light coming um, down towards the earth. I can combine any colors that I wish in my artwork. And as I work, I may then add more water on top to help these colors bleed together. So I can do this by wetting a paintbrush and painting right on top of it. If I don't have a paintbrush at home or I cannot find one, I can use a Q-tip, get that wet and rub it. And if I don't have a Q-tip, I always have my fingertip. You will then continue to wet more sections of your paper and adding more marker as you go along. You can experiment with mixing colors and seeing what dazzling arrays of northern lights you can create in your artwork. Just a little side note that as you work on the wet paper, sometimes the marker tip will develop this little white spot um, that's just where the wet paper has pulled the blue pigment out of this marker. When I cap it, um, I can leave this marker upside down and more ink will flow down into that tip, um, re-wetting the tip and the white spot will disappear in just a few minutes. So you haven't damaged your marker in any way. Continue to um, fill in the rest of your sky by wetting sections of your paper and then putting marker on top, followed by more water with either a paintbrush, a Q-tip, or your fingertip. Pause the video now so that you can complete this section of your painting and press play again when you are done. 
Step three, paint the land. I forgot to mention in our last video segment that you may want to put a paper towel under your artwork to help catch any extra water and protect your work surface. If you haven't done that already, you can pause the video to get a paper towel and then press play when you're ready. Our next step is to use the wet on dry technique in the hills or mountains of our artwork. The wet on dry technique gives us the most control. It means that we are putting wet paint, or in this case, wet marker onto dry paper. You can also put wet marker onto a painted section that is already dry. So wet on dry gives us control because it allows us to overlap colors get very intense colors, and have crisp, sharp edges. Compare that to the wet on wet technique. In this technique, you have wet color meeting wet color, or wet color meeting wet paper, and the edges bleed out and create interesting, fuzzy, and unexpected color blending um, effects. So we're going to do wet on dry here in our hill or mountain area, and we will also use atmospheric perspective. This means that the hill or mountain closest to us will be the most intense in color, and that will be followed by a lighter color and the lightest color in the mountain or hill that is the farthest away from us. Because we're working with marker, our wet on dry technique simply looks like we're taking wet marker and coloring our paper. However, we can do this in a painterly way. So I will fill in this first hill or mountain using green, but I might choose to add an additional color on top of it, such as brown, so that I have a more intense hill color. I can leave my wet on dry technique exactly like this, or if I want to blend those colors together just a little bit more, I can take my fingertip, a paintbrush, or a Q-tip and just lightly wet the marker on top, staying inside my crayon outline. This is still the wet on dry technique because I put my marker onto dry paper. Now I'm going to um, fill in this mountain. I might choose to um, do a little less brown in here and a little bit of green on top. And I might smooth that out with some water. To help it look lighter than the first mountain, I might use extra water so that the color is a little bit lighter. The water kind of fades it. Okay, and then my last mountain, I will fill in here using the marker color of my choice. And if I choose rubbing it with water on top. Take a moment to do this to your paper by pausing the video and press play when this section of your artwork is completed. Step four, paint the water. Before moving on to our third and final step, give your artwork some time to dry. You can test your mountains and your sky by touching it with your fingertip. If your finger feels wet or even cold, your artwork might need a few more minutes to dry. The reason you want to wait for this to dry is so that you don't accidentally have color bleeding down into your ocean, especially if it's colors that you don't want in your ocean water. Our ocean water will be very similar to the way that we completed the sky. Once again, we'll be combining crayon resist with the wet on wet technique. I already drew white waves in my ocean water. 
um, in a previous step, even though they're difficult to see in the video. And so now I'll be layering color on top of that using the wet on wet technique. So once again, I will use either a Q-tip, my fingertip, or a paintbrush to wet sections of my water. In the sky, we did vertical strokes. For the water, I recommend that you do horizontal strokes. This will help make it look like ocean water, which is horizontal to our eye. So wet those areas, then apply your marker right on top of that wet paper. Once again, you can combine colors of your choice so that you get some cool effects in your ocean water. And to help my color blend a little bit more, I can once again put some more water on top of my marker to help those colors blend together. A reminder that this technique works best when you fill in sections at a time um, and work quickly so that your paper remains wet. You may go ahead and pause the video here to complete your artwork. Remember that when you are done, you need to take a picture of your artwork and upload it to Seesaw under the Skill Builder section of the responding template. I can't wait to see what you create. Post your Skill Builder on Seesaw, then move on to the independent practice part of this assignment.